Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Taxpayers beware. Tax season is prime time for phone scams. But first, an attempt at a joke. I apologize in advance. You want to get into it, huh? Do you? You really want to get into it? You should buy TurboTax because they're owned by Intuit. So that way, you can totally get some Intuit. And for a reasonable price. Although, you will need to pay for it because Intuit and TurboTax are apparently not participating in the IRS free file program. I can't say I blame them, really. Tax Tip 2022-15, January 27, 2022. With the new tax season starting this week, the IRS reminds taxpayers to be aware that criminals continue to make aggressive calls, posing as IRS agents in hopes of stealing taxpayer money or personal information. And there's possibly more of an increase in these items with the new tax loss changes, in part because some of that personal information might be more valuable at this point in time because if people can file fraudulent returns, even if they're at the low end of the tax spectrum uh, in terms of income levels, you got all these refundable credits that are out there at this point in time. So now you got the stimulus check, which is the recovery rebate credit. They increased the child tax credit, made more of it refundable. And of course you have the earned income credit and those can make uh, you know this information more and more significant so you got to be on a heightened awareness, even more heightened than normal for uh, personal information, at least with regards to fraudulent tax uh, returns and so on. So here are some uh, telltale signs of a tax scam, along with actions taxpayers can take if they receive a scam call. Obviously, the main thing you want to do is if you're getting a call from the, someone posing as the IRS or anything that you think is a scam, is basically just to say thank you, no thank you, and hang up because the more they keep talking, if you have a good scammer, most of the scammers are not good and it's kind of, it's almost laughable when, when they go through their kind of bit. But if you get a good scammer there, then they'll try to, you know, they might be able to keep you on the phone and so on. And so you just basically have to have to cut them off and be rude and just say, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Goodbye. And uh, that's all you can do, it seems to me. But the IRS will never call to demand immediate payment using a specific payment method such as a prepaid debit card, gift card, or wire transfer. Now, of course, the actual money transfer is generally something that's going to happen at the end of the scam. So even if they had a convincing scam going basically at the beginning, like, oh, you, you know, your family member's in jail, you have to wire us money to give us uh, so we can get bail or something like that. But then if they ask for the money in like a prepaid debit card or a gift card uh, it, in some kind of way that you know is not tra traceable, that should be a kind of a giveaway. Anytime someone's asking for money and they're trying to hide the fact of the transfer so that, so that there's no trail of the transfer, that would be an indication that something is not right. Why would you want, why does it matter how I pay you? I can transfer money a ton of different ways at this point in time, and I'd like to be able to trace the money that I transfer uh, in most cases. So in any case, generally the IRS will first mail or bill to any taxpayer who owes taxes. So generally the IRS is still on the old kind of snail mail type of system, old bureaucratic type of system. So you're usually going to get a bill in the mail. It'll be fairly consistent. The IRS will then, you know, 30 to 60 days later, follow up on it and so on and so forth. So you're generally quite aware of the IRS. Slow, it's like a slowly moving boulder as opposed to somebody calling you really quickly and saying, give me money now or the IRS agent's going to come, come knock on your door. Now, it's usually slow moving boulder, which if you don't take action over a long period of time will crush you, but <laughs> not in some sudden burst typically. So threaten to immediately bring in local police or other law enforcement groups to have the taxpayer arrested for not paying. So any kind of threat that happens like that, you need to take immediate action. These are, of course, scam moves in general where there's a time there's time pressure there's there's you can't you got to make the decision at this point in time and then of course threats uh why because threat you know and that's uh, you know that's not usually how of course the irs will typically work again they're a slow a slow moving boulder <laughs> that will slowly you know th you know make threats but it'll, it won't be like you know all of a sudden call comes out of the blue and you know irs agents gonna you know take you to jail or something typically so demand that taxes be paid without giving taxpayers the opportunity to request or appeal the amount owed so again the that the IRS is 
trying to follow the law as the law is laid down. So basically, you're able to argue against whatever tax they are imposing in accordance with whatever the law is that they're saying that you owe the taxes for. And so call unexpectedly about tax refund. So they're not going to just basically call and say, hey, you're getting a tax refund. We need some more information in order to process that refund. The, the IRS is, call centers are way down <laughs> these days. So they're not really calling many people at all. They're not even taking calls uh, too much. So in any case, tax, well, they're taking some calls, but very, I mean, a fairly low percentage of the calls are getting through. Uh, taxpayers who receive these phone calls should record the number and then hang up the phone immediately. So that's true with any scam. So like I say, if they start, you know, all you can do is say, no, thank you and hang up and then be rude. But that's all you can do. Report the call to TIGTA using their IRS uh, Im Im uh, impersonation scam reporting form. There's a link to that here. Or by calling 800-366-4484. Report the number to phishing at irs.gov. There's a, there's a link to these items here. There'll be the phone number in the description if you want to use these. And be sure to put, quote, IRS phone scam, end quote, in the subject line. More information below can be found at tax scams and consumer alerts, report phishing and online scams. There's links to those items. There'll be this information if you want to report this stuff and have that information here and there'll be a link to this in the description.